Hi, I'm Mark Coniglio, creator of Isadora, and this is tutorial 10. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to use the control panel feature of Isadora to create your own user interface for one of your patches. So to begin, I'm still using the live camera as we've used in tutorials 8 and 9, and I've, in this patch, set it up to be fed through three different effects. Right now, the bypass input on all three of those effects, if you look here and here, and here is turned on. Remember, when bypass is on, the effect is disabled. We're not seeing it. It's bypassing the effect. But the three effects that we have are the dots, and I have to hold my hand here like this, I guess. There's dots, and I turn it back off, and then I have motion blur, like this, and also the video inverter, which basically makes a negative image. So these three effects are here. But they're not active right now because the bypass is on for all of them. But I'm going to use those to illustrate how you can make use of the control panel. So the first step is to actually see the control panel because currently it's not visible. The control panel and the scene editor, which is what you're seeing right now, don't necessarily, uh, you don't see them at the same time. So to do that, go to the controls menu and say show controls. When you do that, everything in the scene editor disappears. And notice also the toolbox over here has changed. No longer do you have the numbers across the top. Instead, you have about uh, 15 or so different controls that you can bring into this place. So when you, when you switch over, you can no longer see the actors. But when you're actually creating your control panel, it's very useful to see the actors as well. So you can also go to the controls menu and say, show actor control split. Now what happens is I can see the actors over here on the right and the control panel that I'm creating here on the left. So the first thing we're going to do is simply make some buttons to allow us to turn the bypass on and off in each of the uh, three uh, effect actors we have in the other patch. To do that, click on the module called Button. It works just like the actors. You click once, you can let go of the mouse, and you move over find where you'd like to deposit that button and click again. Okay, And so you have this little button here and right now it's called button. Um, and importantly is this number up here in the right corner. Every control has a number to identify it, to uniquely identify it within the control panel. And this is how you make the link between the control and the thing you're going to affect inside of the actors. So first thing we want to do though is let's change the name of that. It's not very useful to call it button. So I'm going to double click the button and I get this dialog. And down here where it says button text, that's where you can change the text that's shown inside of the button itself. So I'm going to call this one dots. Also you have choices for choosing a different font up here and the font size. I'm actually going to change the font size to 12 and I think I'll choose Arial Bold. Okay. So now I've set the font, and you can see those changes take effect in the button as you're doing it. Arial bold, 12 point, and we change the button text to dots. Now I say OK. So we have our button over here, and what we want to do is connect that to the bypass input of the dots actor to turn it on and off. To do that, I click inside of the number one, and here you do have to drag your mouse. You're going to get a wire very similar to what you do when you hook up actors and you're going to point at the bypass input of the dots actor. When you let go, no wire will remain, but instead you'll see this little tab appear to the left of the word bypass or to its input with a number one inside of it. That's telling you that that input is linked to control number one inside of the control panel. Let's say we want to try this out. If I point at the button and click it, Nothing happens actually because right now we're in edit mode. This is where we're creating the actual patches. So it's expecting me to move the button around because I'm editing it. To try it out, you need to go to the controls menu and say disable edit mode. Once you do that, the toolbox on the left disappears and now we just have the one button. If I click on the word on, on the button marked dots, nothing happens, but if I let go, so what's happening is when I press it down, that's on, it turns the bypass on and we see the original image. When I let go, you see the dots because the bypass is off. Now really what we want this to do is to change back and forth each time we hit the button. So 
We want to change another characteristic of the button itself. So I'm going to go into the controls menu and say enable edit mode. And now again, we're going to double click on the button. And if you look inside here, you see this thing that says mode. And really what we want is toggle, not momentary. Toggle means click it once and it turns on, click it again, it turns off. We want to go back and forth. So now I say OK. Now, when you're trying things out, this going back and forth between edit mode can be a bit of a hassle. So there's a handy shortcut uh, that you can use to try your button without having to switch between. I'm going to hold down the Alt key on my keyboard, or on some older Macintoshes might say Option. If you do that, and I click the button, it behaves as if edit mode was disabled. So if you just want to try out your little patch, then hold down the Alt key, and you can try the controls without switching back and forth between edit mode. And now you can see it's doing what we hoped it to do. To finish up this section, I'm going to copy and paste the button. Notice that the numbers automatically change though. I've got number two and number three even though it still says dots. I'm going to double click the second button. We call that motion for motion blur. Say OK. And then I'm going to take the third button and call that invert. Same procedure as before. I'm going to take the mouse Click in the number 2 where it says Motion, connect that to the Bypass of Motion Blur, and then I'm going to click in the number 3, click in Invert, and connect that to the Bypass of the Video Inverter Actor. And again, the tabs appear to the left showing me that I've connected those to those various buttons. Now, you can see that I can click on the buttons and change the Bypass, turning it on or off in each case. And you can see the different effects taking place depending on what combinations of buttons I have turned on. So that's the beginning of the control panel. And the main things here are being able to add a, a control is just like adding an actor, double clicking them to set the various parameters, and then linking them using this process of clicking in the number box at the top right and dragging it to the actor input you want to control. In the next tutorial, we'll continue this to learn how to use some of the other controls inside of the system.